Fong. I met Fong in uh, Professor Pitcairn's St. Mary's astronomy class. We were studying the sun and uh, the universe, or I mean the solar system and the universe. When I first saw Fong, she was the only Asian girl in this class of approximately 237 people. Maybe 232, I don't know. But there was over a couple hundred people in this class. It was done in a theater in the Burke, Burke Building. And when I first saw Fong, she was um, quite um, unique because she had this little tiny Asian nose that I've never seen on any Asian girl before because it was, it was petite. And it was so... Um, attractive. It was so cute. Um, but she looked extremely young. She was 19 at the time and completely too young for me. So I decided, you know, I'm not going to even bother to make any attempts to be with this girl. She used to sit down near the middle of the theater during um, uh, study time, but as she began to come in late, about uh, three weeks later into class, classes, she began to come in late. She sat down the back where I was, and uh, that is how we got together because she used to lean over and ask me questions about what was going on in the uh, lectures or studies, or she missed out on a session or got it there halfway through, she would ask me questions, what did she miss? So we became friends after that. Little did I know that she was trans probably trans best friend at uh, university. Uh, I later found out that uh, Fong actually had a boyfriend. He was roughly 23, 24 years old, living off his parents' money. He was quite wealthy from his parents' money. He didn't work for it. Although he did, he did work, but that's not where the wealth end of it came from. So, As I said, she was too young, but we became good friends. And uh, she always wore the same type of outfit. It was a black sweater, I mean uh, a white sweater with black pants. Uh, she was a very thin girl too as well. She almost looked like she was starving herself, but you know, if you know Asian females, they tend to be really thin. And it's uh, it's, you know, it's common. It's not that they're starving, it's just that's genetically how they're built. So, she used to have a lot of fights with her boyfriend. I mean, they didn't get along, but, you know, Fong was so damn cute, there's no way that he was leaving her. And, uh, you know, she used to travel with me on study sessions with Tran and, you know, asked me about automotive repairs one time when she was having car problems. I pointed out once where I had lived, down by the Armdale Rotary, and just by coincidence I had the door open one day and she drove by, um, leaning down in her seat, seeing if, you know, checking out the place, seeing if that is where I lived, and my car was there anyway, so she recognized the place. But the interesting part was, I actually had a, a weird fantasy about this girl. And the fantasy was that we were walking up Shabakta Road, which is a steep incline, and I would be pushing a baby carriage with our baby in it. And it was, uh, you know, and I was, in the fantasy, I was extremely proud to be seen with this girl and to have had a child with her. Uh, last time I saw Fong, she was in a, well, she was in and out of relationships with this guy that she was with because they, as I said before, they fought a lot. And the last time I saw her, she was walking on Spring Garden Road towards the library, back together again with her ex-boyfriend. And um, she, they were walking with a, a nail. I think two other Asian couples and I saw her cell phone ring and she reached down and picked it up 
started talking. And I thought, should I go up and say hi? Because I was walking behind them and I said, you know what, no. It doesn't really matter. And the last time I heard about Fong, she had gone to Montreal, this was years ago, and got a job at a bank. Although, I find this hard to believe because she never finished her education. She didn't get her degree at that time. So I don't see how she could ever have gotten a job in the bank in Montreal if she didn't have a degree. She had left uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia for the sole purpose of getting away from her boyfriend. She just didn't want to be near this guy anymore. Fong uh, and her sister uh, practically raised themselves because their mother had died in Toronto due to a drunk driver. And so uh, Fong and her sister never had the benefit of having a woman in the house. And it was just their father and he was away at work all the time. So and she seemed to manage quite well. And she remains to this day, in my mind, the most elegant Asian girl I've ever met because she knew what her looks were and she knew exactly how to look her best at all times. And she had an impeccable face and hairstyle and clothing. A very, very pretty girl. I wish you had seen her. Okay, that is the story of Fong.